Welcome to Rincon Valley Wine and Craft Beer. And today we're here with William Allen of Two Shepherds Winery. And we're going to be asking him questions about his wines, about his grapes, and his philosophy. All right, first off, William, we, we were kind of curious as to, we know you appreciate a lot of different varietals, but why did you specifically choose Rome varietals to work with? Rome varieties were my personal favorite. Um, even before I was commercially making wine. And uh, the reason I gravitated towards them and then felt like I had no choice but to make them is if you compare the, the category of Rhone varieties versus, say, Bordeaux, Alsace, Burgundy, I think it offers consumers and, and wine aficionados the broad, broadest range there is. I mean, one, it's a much broader grape family. If you look at side of the Rhone Valley, 23 different varieties make up the category. Um, we don't have all those in California, but we have quite a few. And if you compare... The difference, say, between Grenache, Syrah, Mouvedre, Senso, Carignan, in comparison to, say, the Red Bordeaux family. Um, and that's not to knock the category, but I just think there's a much broader range of flavor profile and expression inside of those. Um, and then on top of that, because you have so many more grape varieties to work with, when it comes to making blends, which is what the Rhone Valley is all about, You've got these infinite number of combinations that can be made. You take five, six, seven, eight, nine varieties and, and work to make them in a blend. So as a winemaker, you have this amazing array of tools to work with. And as a consumer, it's a never-ending discovery because a blend from one producer in the same region can be very different just based on percentages that are put into it, the way the wine is made. Um, and on the whites, I, I fell in love with Rhone whites first. And I, I just think they offer such depth and complexity um, and don't have to be overpowering to accomplish that. And again, if you look at the difference between Grenache Blanc versus Roussan versus Merson versus Vignet, there's this really wide range of tools that, that exist for consumers to taste and winemakers to work with. Great. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned Grenache Blanc, and we know that's one of your favorite, if not the very most favorite wine you make. And one of the questions we often get at our shop is from the local customers is Chardonnay and Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc are their primary, you know, white wines. And they go, what is Grenache Blanc? What does it taste like? And what, what would you say to that? It's, Grenache Blanc is interesting because, well, it's very widely planted in Spain, um, and common as Grenache Blanca, and, and very widely planted in the Southern Rhone. Although it's typically as a blend, it's very difficult to see 100% Grenache Blanc in, in most parts of France. Um, and in California, we have so little. There's only about 225 acres in the entire state and very little in Northern California and the North Coast. So consumers don't see it. I must answer at least two to three times a week explaining that it's not the red Grenache pressed off the skins <laughs> made into a white wine. It is, it is its own white variety. There are actually three grapes in the Grenache family, Grenache Gris as well, which I work with. But um, it's a grape that is... I don't always like making analogies. In some ways, it's it's like Chardonnay in that it responds greatly to winemaking style. So even though there's only probably 20 producers that make Grenache Blanc in California, you can find a very wide variance. Um, you'll find some that do the more Spanish Grenache Blanca, mm -hmm. fermented and stainless, very bright, you know, big oysters, um, but not as broad in dimension in a wine. You'll see a, a lot from Paso Robles that are a little bit riper and softer. Um, and then my style, which I think there's only a few people that make it like this, is a little more complex. It spends more time um, going through aging. It has really bright acidity, but for those people who drink Chardonnay and taste this, as long as they're not looking for that big buttery oaky thing, they notice the roundness and the softness because the bright acidity is offset by um, barrel aging in neutral barrels and malolactic and lees aging, which gives it that. So what you get, in, at least in my Grenache Blanc, is this really big nose with, with you know orange blossom and bright fruit, a little bit of lemon. Sometimes people pick up a green tea, and then in the mouth you get this really soft, round mid palate, and then the acidity comes back into the finish. So you have this really long, lingering finish. It pairs really well with things like roasted chicken, um, salads that have a little bit of a uh, maybe some goat cheese and beef and a little bit of vinegar, um, or it's just great to drink by itself. Mm -hmm.